All right, all right, all right. Peace, y'all. We're back with another interview for this year's extremely important election cycle. This time, we're going to go back to District 3. We have Baba Afalabi. He is going to be coming on to tell us more about what he's doing, um, why he's working so hard. And he is working hard, I have to say. I've seen more of his posters up around town than I've seen any other candidate. And not that that is the end all be all, but it does show you who is out there engaging with the businesses uh, and making it happen. So with no further ado, I'm going to bring up Baba to the stage. Baba, welcome. Thank, Thank you for Thank coming you for on. Thank you. And uh, these interviews have been going really well. Thousands of people are watching them. They're learning more about our candidates and their pets and all the things that they have to share <laughs> with their neighbors. So I'm going to give you a quick 30 seconds to introduce yourself. Not a stump speech. We got that at the okay. end. But give okay. your name, where you're from, what do you do, and then I'll get you the first question. Thank you for that, Seneca. I really appreciate you having me on here. My name is Baba Afolabi. I'm a 26 years resident of Oakland, particularly District 3. Uh, I'm a student of Laney College. I went to Cal State Awards to study criminal justice. And I have an MBA in organization leadership and, and business. I've built about three, four businesses in the last 10, 11 years, hiring about 80 people. So I really understand where we are in terms of the city because okay I'm okay that's a, on that's the a ground, stump, uh, that's a like stump speech i gotta cut you off that's a stump speech but it's okay i don't you, right. that means All you're right. doing it look make me do my job your job is to get your information to the people so i don't have i don't hold thought to <laughs> you but i want to keep it a level playing field and try to get people the same amount of time mm -hmm. and then you know if you save some time you'll have more time at the end so the quicker you answer these questions not that i want you to rush the more time we'll have to talk about whatever it is that's on that's on yes. your mind. All right, question number one. Name a policy passed in the last eight years by city council, something city council did in the last eight years that you agree that there's a legitimate problem to address, but you do not like the way that they addressed it and the policy they passed. You have seven minutes. I will give you this at five. I will give you this at two, and this means stop. And okay. go. Okay, one of it is the progressive tax that was passed, um, I believe, a couple of uh, years ago. For me, when you look at the, which was a tax on, on big businesses, like they said, one of the misstep of that is Oakland does not have enough big business to tax to begin with because over 90% of, of Oakland businesses are small businesses, right? And when that was done, from what I read, that was supposed to bring in between 17 to $32 million. Um, I believe he has brought in about $20 million, if I'm correct on, on what I read. Here's the, here's the biggest issue with that, uh, with that particular uh, policy. When you taxing big businesses, you have to understand that the smaller business also need to get some uh, something back from that. So that old fund was spent on uh, homeless services, which I fully support that we need to, but you cannot take money from businesses and don't understand that the small businesses, particularly given the time that we're coming out of pandemic, does not deserve some, um, some uh, you know, investment in. Because I will tell you as a small business owner, large population of the people that are homeless today work for one or two small businesses. I always put it this way. People will walk two, three jobs to have a roof over their head. But when small businesses start closing down one job, two jobs, they are they are now down with one job, which is not enough to live in Oakland. I don't condone people working hard, but I think every man and woman in this city will just out of dignity have pride. They would rather work two, three jobs to have a roof over their head and have no job at all. So when we make this kind of policy, we have to think about it holistically and see that if I'm taking from Peter to rob, you know, to 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 to, to give to Paul, I need to ens ensure that Peter brothers and sisters are taken care of as well. And that's what is happening because when they took this money from uh, uh, the so-called big business that we don't even have enough of to make our economy robust, not trickle down to small businesses. And I believe the way they could have done that is saying every small business is the higher on house individuals. We can help you give you some level of grant from this money. Maybe 10% is allocated, maybe 15% is allocated, but nothing was talked about. All they say is, oh, 
small business is going to get a tax credit, but no, I'm a small business. I don't get any tax credit. When my when my company make a million dollars, I have to pay 10.25% of that to true sales tax. So we need to understand how that really affects small businesses. I didn't, I, I'm not saying that this big business don't mind, but also the big businesses are not getting what they're paying for. Come to talk about uh, safety. You know, we just heard uh, Clorox and, and, and Kaiser, you know, have to fund $10 million to bring security to their door front. So you don't have $10 million, do we... huh? You don't have $10 million, Baba? <laughs> I wish I do. <laughs> so they have to fund their own security because it's gotten so bad. So these are the ways that I believe that we need to understand when we're making policy. How does it affect the ecosystem? And we cannot just be one-sided and don't understand how we affect the ecosystem. And I think that's what Oakland is struggling from. You have a lot of people that never really even manage that. They never really hire people and pay uh, 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 income tax or whatnot. So they don't understand what dollar and They've cent never is. read a profit and loss. Yes. So They've never uh, signed, they never signed checks on the front. Is that what you're saying? Yes, that's what I'm saying. So, so for me, it's really understanding that if we're doing all this type of policy, how does it affect the ecosystem and making sure that we create a balance overall? Okay. So with the three minutes so that's, we have that's, left, that's definitely me. No, that's that. great because I have some questions. So the progressive business tax is what you're talking mm -hmm. about, correct? Yes. Okay. And did I hear you correct when you said you hired and responsible for over 80 people? And you got you have a you have an MBA. Oh yeah. So you actually, and do you have any um yes. any area of focus in municipal finance, or was it more just for regular business type stuff? I think I think for me is because when you look at our uh, revenue generator, you know, and I think I wrote an uh, an essay about that on my LinkedIn and and my IG about how small businesses actually funnel money through the system. You know, like I was just on a, on a panel with the incumbent that actually feel the need to tell me that property tax is the only thing that run the economy. And that to me was alarming. That means you don't understand the ecosystem. Oh, all no, the they don't. That, all the people that are on the hills or flatland, they all have businesses in downtown, right? And you have to understand the employee work for those businesses so they're able to pay rent. If you don't pay rent, there's no, you're not going to be able to pay your property tax, right? And those mm -hmm. that own businesses that live on the hills, they also need their business to function so that they can pay their property tax. So everything is intertwined. So when I hear officials don't get the understand that small businesses are truly the backbone of this city, it's alarming. So we cannot have those type of representative representing us. It's just that simple. I agree with that. Um, so we have a little bit of time left, so I'm going to try to sneak one more question in, but I'm going to do it at the back end of the next question so we can have a more, um, I guess, consolidated concession that's not like hopping around or anything. So the next question is a simple but very important one. Section 218 of Oakland City Charter prevents city council members from talking to anyone except the mayor's office and the city administrator's office except for the purpose of inquiry. What that means in layman's terms, for those of you who are listening, you can ask them questions all day long, but you cannot give them direction. And so that means you have to work with yeah. different people to get the stuff done. How do you plan to navigate um, Section 218, and how do you plan to work in the city to make sure that you can deliver the things that you're going to be promising us in your stump speech and what you've been telling people all around the city you're going to do for us to, to get our vote? How do you plan on delivering on those promises if you cannot say, hey, clean that up, Public Works? Why aren't you cleaning that up? You can ask them why you're not, why are you not cleaning that up, but you can't say, I need you to clean that up. Just like that, you violated Section 218 and you can be removed from office and charged with a criminal offense. So it's a very, very serious section yep. I wish more people spoke about. So you have seven, four minutes to answer this question. Uh, you do not have to take that long. It could be a lot shorter and then we'll yes. get to the next one. All right, let's I, go. I, I think it will be, it will be short. I mean, it's, 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 it's a book of, it's the law of the land. So everybody have to play by that. I think one of the things that I've been telling people when I converse or when I have an engagement is to say, 
one of the beauty about being a city council is you have relationship with everybody. You kind of act as the middleman, right? You are a liaison of the, of the community. So if you have relationship with the community, you know what they want. And then you're able to deliver that to the city through the administrator or the mayor, right? Because at the end of the day, if things fall short of happening, yes, the city council is gonna get a brunt of it, but the larger person that's gonna get it is the mayor. So having a good relationship with those two departments, uh, the, 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 the mayor and the administrator is key to get to the uh, city different departments. And I believe that one of the, I'm, again, I'm not a, I never worked for the city before. And I think that's why my candidacy is so important because I'm, I don't speak the buzzwords. I don't know them and I don't care for them. I speak layman term, how things affect me as a father, how it affect me as a business owner, how it affect me as a, as a, as a black man in, in, in Oakland. So I'm able to speak to that. So I think as a city council, you have to know your biggest asset is your relationship with the community, with the mayor office and the administrator and the Oakland city workforce itself. Because when you come into the office, you see these people every day, up to the security at the door. If they see you to be approachable, friendly, a lot of them will be able to work with you uh, 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 um, in, in, in unity. So it's very important. I think that's probably what we're missing because I was just talking to someone earlier about how we all we all did not pay attention to what was happening four years ago, right? Because well, I don't, you, I don't know about us all. I was paying attention. No, I think you now. are because I, I do, I do saw some of the debate you do. I think a lot of because it was in the mix of that pandemic and every everything, right? Twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty two came back, and we're all trying to recover from that. So that's what I meant by a lot of people are. Distracted. No, I would, I would just mess it with you. Yes, voters yeah. were just. I mean, everybody was in shock, and people were dealing with, you know. All of, everything you just said, I, I agree exactly. with you. Exactly. So because of that, when when I peel back and look at the city council member and I'm like, okay, what's going on here? And I start seeing that, you know, when you look at people's background and you look at what they've done or what they're doing and seeing how things are now moving and it boils down to having a good relationship. When you have people that are, you know, don't know what their role should be or how to go about their role strategy. I have an MBA in in, in business in in organization leadership and strategy. You have to understand your objective, and how to your objective is, and your objective come from your constituent, the, the the community, and getting that done is your ultimate goal, not your personal agenda, not because oh I want to stick it to. Uh, uh, Seneca for now agreeing with me. No, it's saying they want this thing to be done, the road to be paved or the something to be clean. You have to figure out a strategic way to get the mayor on your side, to get the administrator on your side so that they can liaise for you. They can represent you in front of the this different department in the city to get your message across. I think it's very key important to know that, to know that you hold uh, your power is that relationship you have. And I think that's what I'm going to be able to bring uh, to City Hall. And so we have three minutes left here. So I want to add that time to your next question because this is the big one. Uh, okay. But before that, I have a few things I wanted to say as I introduce this question that Oakland is in a crisis. And what mm -hmm. will your area of focus be? I think I can probably guess. <laughs> but uh and how do you plan to use your vote to reform Oakland? Now, this is a leading question because you will have to agree that Oakland needs to reformation. I think that we are aligned in that, so I don't feel uncomfortable with asking you that question, but I want to acknowledge that it is not a neutral question. Um, it is, it is, you know, basically saying that we're not on the up and up. We're not doing what we need to do. No, we're not. That's my, okay, so that being said, I have always said in many of my previous stump speeches when I've run for public office, which I'm not doing this year and probably never will again, um, and when I'm talking to clients for my my company around town, I'm not going to self-promote, so I won't say the name. I always talk about cities and commas. So you an, are you an immigrant, Baba? Yeah, I'm an Oh, yeah, I'm an immigrant. Second and generation. So what country are you from? Nigeria. Okay, so... Nigeria, as a country, which is many countries, which has many cities, the very ancient, that goes back and back and back, 
and and I'll ask you if you agree with me or disagree with me here. Every city is only formed for one reason, a city. And that's commerce. That's business. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. And so the city's job is to protect commerce mm -hmm. and to educate the next generation of competitive workers yeah. and to make sure that you stay innovative and yes. that you, again, protect commerce. Yes. Um, it's also the only place where working people can have any economic mobility. Yes. You being an entrepreneur, you are a living embodiment of someone who's coming not to be an employee, but an employer and put their, their, their ideas that you have with your, I don't know, you said four or five businesses yep. that you started. Yep, that I've started. That's a lot of ideas, here. right? That's a lot of ideas. And if there's no city, you can't do that. You can't. Um, no, go ahead. Can, go ahead, jump in. And if I can jump in right quick, um, I was talking to a friend two or three weeks ago, and I said, look, look back, because I came in, I bought, I came into Oakland in 98, 99, and I, you know, I was focusing on school, but I started really paying attention to downtown Oakland in 2003, 2005. I was a night uh, bar manager for Air Lounge in old Oakland, you know. I used time. to go there. Exactly. Yeah, so it, it created a lot of the one downstairs. Yeah, and all in the yeah that was my exactly. that was my joy. Yeah. I mean, so we created yeah. we create we created a lot of community doing that because a lot of people were turning twenty one. You know, people were coming around. You know, and there was nowhere to go, but it was a safe space for especially black and brown folks. I mean, everybody came down there, but particularly black and brown folks. That was the spot for them. And for me, it's understanding that if you do not take care of your businesses, I mean you done deal and that's what we're saying and for me to have and i think one of the like you point, pointed out one of the reasons why i'm running is when i look back to uh oakland district three i say why do we have somebody that doesn't prioritize small business again i'm not saying business is end all be all but it is the ripple effect it's because think about it if you're going to take care of the homelessness you're going to talk about money mm -hmm. Okay, nonprofits are meant to run without making money, but they need money to be run, right? So if you're going to talk about security, you're going to talk about payment, paying money, right? If you're going to talk about fire department, you're going to talk about money. So everything at the end of the day hinge on finance. And who brings in that finance? It's small business. What percentage? What percentage? of Oakland's tax, business tax revenue comes from small businesses. I don't know. Do you know? I believe it's probably about 24%, I want to say. Uh, it might be even more. Yes, yes. I just wrote a piece, uh, an essay on that, like how, you know, uh, property tax and small businesses, how they actually drive Oakland. Because the thing is, all those properties you see are businesses, Okay. So they don't get counted together. So the small, the small they don't, it's, from, it's different. So there's a real estate. But they are small property. businesses. Small they properties. Small. I agree with you. Yeah. Exactly. So again, that's when a incumbent say that I'm like, okay, this is a problem, because our view is very important. You know, you can only see as far as your mind goes, right? So if you can see Oakland as the way it should be, the what I'm bringing is the possibility. Because I'm an international person, you know, I, I grew up born and raised in Lagos, Nigeria, which is one of the biggest metropolitan cities in Africa. I uh, Tokyo, Japan is one of my favorite, uh, I call it my adopted hometown. Like I love Tokyo, Japan. I go there when I used to travel, I go there five years straight. So I love Tokyo, New York, all of these things. When you look at some point in time, those big cities have challenges and they're able to mm -hmm. come back from that because they pay attention to their commerce. OK, so for me, that's what I bring in and saying, look, I'm looking 10, 15 years and I'm looking at my friends that started businesses and struggle and have to let it go because Oakland did not help. Oakland did not create an avenue or a, a conducive environment for them to flourish. I have friends that have moved to Portugal. I have friends that have moved to L.A. I have friends that have moved to Miami or New York because they just couldn't take it. And when you look at it, everything that we've created, it's not because the business model is bad. It's because the environment we're in doesn't support us. I'll give you a prime example. My last business was Mushing, a, 
a, a very nice, you know, upscale, so to speak, sport bar that a lot of people enjoy. It was a community for a lot of us, right? We struggled not because our business model was poor. We struggled because every single, I would say maybe three out of 10 or four out of 10 uh, uh, um, customers that come get their car broken into, right? Mm. So that happened so much that even my personal friends would text me two, three months and say, Baba, sorry, I haven't come through. Like the last time my car got broken into, my wife was upset with me, you know? So this start affecting families or you have people that usually bring their kids to downtown or, or hang around. I still bring my kids out. but Not, but, not right now. Exactly, but people are afraid because of what may happen. If they, if the, if the man, if the father is not afraid, the mothers are, you know. So this mm -hmm. is the thing we have to start thinking about how these little little things affect the general population, right? And I hate to say it because I've heard our incumbent somehow say this is a loom and doom, <laughs> like it's happening. Uh, uh, one my one of my favorite, not even one, the only African and Caribbean food market that we have in, in, in old Oakland, in this, in district three got, yeah. got broken into a few weeks I'll ago. Be interview, I'll be interviewing her and her husband Friday. So you were telling me about the business struggle, but uh, let's use this moment to pivot just a little bit. Let's get serious here for a minute. When it comes to winning elections, you need three, two or three things. Money, name recognition, and endorsement. And when you don't have at least two, it yeah. gets hard to win. Not impossible, but difficult. And you are sort of a, how do I call it, a spoiler candidate? Yep, and I'm, um, yep, I am. I'm glad you know yeah. that. <laughs> don't think yeah, no, no, you're a spoiler. Um, and, and it's because of, here's the thing, there's a difference between power earned and power um, given. And so when you have people who have an, and I'm not saying the agenda's a bad one, I have an agenda, right? And I'm pretty transparent about my agenda. I'm trying to recall a mayor and I'm trying to get people elected who are pro-commerce, pro-business and pro-public safety and actually care about our elders and our babies. I'm transparent in my agenda. and uh, and I can be pretty aggressive to employ it. But this is more about you than me. So let's talk about you. That's what people are here. I got my own show. I talk about me all the time. But check it out. Oakland right now, you are, you coming in to spoil the party. And now you're forcing this to be a three-way race, it appears, when before people thought it was going to be a two-way race. But the only thing that's going to be able to pull you over, in my opinion, is if you're really clear to the voter about what you're going to do different and you're willing to call out, not that you have to be disparaging or negative, but you can point out exactly what went wrong. And so what I want you to talk about, and you got you know at least five minutes to, to go in on this, is right now we have the possibility of having the incumbent elected again. What? Why did you decide to run? Um, why are you working so hard to, you know, you have to overcome some pretty big odds here. I'm not, again, it's not impossible. And you have effectively made it a three-way race, in my opinion. Um, not that I'm anyone special, but, you know, people do listen to what I say for whatever reason. So, um, you, again, what don't you like about what's going on right now? So what is what man, are you really me, gonna let, do? Let what are you really like gonna this. do different, uh, man? Like we hear it all the time. What are you gonna do different? Not no, I'm gonna be safe for city and do you know I'm not saying you talk like that. You've actually been very uh deliberate and, and detailed about what you don't like about the yeah. business policy, and I appreciate that. Yes. Anyway, take the floor is yours, brother. Talk to the people who wanna hear some fire. Because what I hear from the people who are talking is this is the most boring, anemic, playing it safe election they've ever seen. And nobody wants to really say anything that's risky. And I think it's because of that ranked choice voting crap that I don't like that forces people to have to play nice with everybody. But for right now, you didn't got to play nice with no one. 
Why are we voting for you? Earn our vote. You got the rest of the floor. It's yours. Your website is up here. Take five minutes. Tell us what are you really gonna do for us, brother? I'm listening. Okay, so I live. I live for, in this district. I live here. Yeah. yeah. So, like, just like mine, and it's a requirement to do so. And I've been living here for so long, so I know this district like back of my hand. You know. So for me, I think the reason why I'll, I'll go back to. Just seeing as a business owner, like I said, I've built in the last 11 years, I've built three. And every single one of them at some point meet the city's inadequacy. I'll give you a perfect example. When I was, you know, the cathedral building on the corner of uh, 16 and between Telegraph and Broadway. It's the, it's the white cathedral building. Yeah, I can't hear you. I'm sorry, I muted myself to give you the floor because I don't want to interrupt you. But the triangle yeah. one, the triangle one. Yeah. Peach so was there. I was, Coffee was there. Yeah, Pete Coffee was there before he changed hands. So before Pete Coffee was there, myself and my and my friend, Alana, we activated that building uh, from the back of Occupy Wall Street, Occupy Oakland, all that 2011 uh, stuff. So we occupied that by going to the landlord and saying, look, this place is empty. She did actually, and she called me on board. And we activated that from then on, right after us is when uh, Pete Covey came there. So these are the impact that my creativity have done, okay? Uh, the space that, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, where we just had a, a forum, uh, King Folk is at, as of right now. I have a oh, friend. Oh, right across from Shake Shack that got closed. They just yeah, closed down. Yes, yes, they closed down. Right there, uh, one of my friends, uh, um, Michael Orange, before oh, I know all Michael this, Orange. Friday yeah. First Friday becomes First Friday. He's an artist. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So we used to do it. We used to curate over there. I would come there and do my clothing, and you know, I have a, we have a friend called Kali, um, and they would do all this painting and curate. So I'm saying this to say. I have been on the ground. I've been doing the work. So going, you know, going to the office would just be me connecting from the streets to the city hall. I will be the connector. I'm not somebody coming from my office. You know, I didn't. Well, I never run. Your, how are you going to put all these businesses on hold? You got your. You got, are your children ready to take the reins from you or something? Are they? Are, <laughs> are they adults? Are you passing it on? Or are you planning on juggling multiple businesses and doing a full time job of being a councilman? I think. Let me let me give you my background. When I was in in 2008, when I was in grad school, I was working for IKEA full time, working in Palo Alto, driving every day to Palo Alto. And my grad school was in John was John F. Kennedy in Pleasant Hill. And I was managing a nightclub, hair lounge at that time. And I started a business called Suru at the same time. And I did that for two, three, four years. I worked in IKEA for six years. So all of these I'm not new to. I'm, some of my friends always say they think I have a shock ab absorber. So yeah, do you have a twin? Are you guys working together? This huh? is a, do you have a twin? Are you working together? No, it's just me. You know, not Nigeria. Y'all be ahead I, of the I, tech I, game, y'all. Did Nigeria figure out cloning? <laughs> and y'all didn't tell us because you know y'all real smart over there. Um, they are absolutely <laughs> are. blowing it away. And I'm in, in the global I'm glad, economy I'm glad right you, now. I'm glad you point that out. So, as a Nigeria, one thing we know is how to hustle and hustle hard, also smart. I think we are blessed with the street knowledge and the academic knowledge, and that's what I provide. I can present to you how the city of Oakland should be, you know, in a, as a bit, you know, it's uh, the way it should function. I'm blessed with that capability, and I have the friendship. I have the, uh, the, 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 the ability, you can, like, I smile a lot because there's no reason to frown. It's really hard to, to be enemy with somebody because I understand we all have a need. And I'm going to be able to listen to that. So going back, what I bring to the city all is really coming from the street, understanding I've been a small uh, a landlord before. I've been an employer, which if you look at the last, you know, city council we've had, they cannot boast that. OK, so I am somebody that I've always been on the street. So you were talking about, um, you know, raising money and, 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 and endorsement. I just had a meeting where I said, you know what? I purposely do not want to do this. I could have been going to friends that are business owners and say, hey, endorse me. And do I'm like, no, your work should speak for you. 
one of the things I have friends of mine that came to me, why are you running against this person? I'm, I'm not running against anybody. It's four years. It's a democratic process. Every four years, we have the choice to run. And what I ask them is that, that person that's in the office, that's the incumbent, do you know them before they're in office? They said no. So do you know me? 10 years, 15 years, I'm talking. So if you can know me and you can speak to my character, why can't you trust, you know, why can't you believe that I am actually better? And, and trust me, twice that this has happened, they backed out, they were like, you know what, you're right. You're right. You've been in on the ground. I've been part of, in the black, I've been part of this first fight that we know today. I've been activating spaces in downtown. Listen, I'm not saying that I have it, all the answers, but as an entrepreneur, what I can do is create opportunity in a creative way to maximize what we need to do. And and one of the reasons why a lot of people are not investing in Oakland is because they don't trust what we currently have. So when you have somebody like me that they know that I've already invested my money, I've lost and I'm still betting, I just signed a $1.4 million uh, 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 um, lease two, two, two months ago. So we not lose. I'm always going to be in Oakland, but I want to. But I know I'm not losing because I'm doing the work. I'm putting out. I'm I'm going every day and you know knocking on those doors and giving people my flyers. And I'm going to continue to do that because I also want to prove that you don't need hundred and fifty thousand dollars to run this district. Your work should be able to speak for you. And those well, it's are not the, a very big district. It's only forty five thousand people. Yeah. And um, I, I cut in because we're going we're gonna to wrap it up soon. But I will say the most profound thing that you said, and this was to me an excellent interview, I can't wait for people to see it, is that the order of operation for an elected official, and I'm paraphrasing with my own words here, is to get the issues from the people, talk to the people, and figure out the issues they want, and then advocate for those issues. And by people, you mean business owners. And yeah. I also think it's very important that you added small housing providers into the business community because they are also small businesses oh, uh, and they are business, under a significant yeah, yeah. amount of duress right now. And so yeah. um, this has been and, great. Yeah, go ahead. You got one more I minute, wrap on it up. Let, yeah. Yeah, let me touch on uh, housing particularly. For me, small landlord need to be taken care of. When we're talking about rent, uh, renters, we need to be talking about small landlord again. We have to understand that there needs to be a playing field and a, a, and a scale that everybody feel heard. Because right now we're painting landlords, small or big, we're painting them like they're bad people. I'm saying, mm -hmm. no, we need to be able to subsidize for small landlords in particular. So I'm releasing my, you know, I've had my, I have my plan around that. So I'm going to be releasing it. Uh, uh, which I've released some of them, but a comprehensive one is coming out in, in by the end of this week. Awesome. Well, hey, I wish we had more time. Maybe we'll have a, another interview if you manage to pull this off and, and bring the victory home. I will pull it off. Uh, they, I, lo I love the confidence, and I'm seeing it displayed by people who are, are buying in and, like I said, putting up your stuff and probably saying that they're voting for you for the first spot. In a district where 80% of our business tax revenue comes from District 3, I think that it's yeah. very important that the person who's from here has at least some sort of business acumen, if not yeah. uh, a business background. And yeah. so hopefully that separates you from the other candidates. And Amen. again, I really appreciate you coming on, giving us your time today. I know you're really busy, you know, running... A thousand businesses running for office. You got children too, man. Yeah. You are a busy guy, and I bet you do cook every day. You probably cook too. You, you know, but time management is extremely. All jokes aside, that means you have to have time management, and yes. you have to be able to prioritize and delegate. And all yes. of those are very, very important traits and, and skills that we need uh, in this position right now. So, Absolutely. thank you, Baba. Peace, brother. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Oakland, you. for watching. Make sure you vote. Make sure you right. rank choice vote, vote, and don't mess that up. And if you yeah. have questions on rank choice voting, ask people. Don't just be filling it out and making no mistakes because we cannot have that happen again. I love you yep. all. Peace again. Have a Thank good you. day. I'll talk to you soon. I have this out for you today, brother. No doubt. Thank all you. All right, peace. Okay. Yo, I swear it's only up from here. Yo, I swear it's only up from here. Yo, I swear it's only up from here. Yo, I swear it's only up from here.